Hello, welcome to my talk on wave energy conversion, boundary element method, part two, Green's theorem and the Green function. In this talk, the details in deriving the boundary integral equation for wave structure interactions are presented. The author believes this would be very important for understanding the method, and the author made a search on this topic, but failed to find the full derivation on how the boundary integral equation is derived, including some famous books on hydrodynamics and the sea loads. This is why I decide to present the full detailed derivation in this talk and the next. In this part, we will use the Laplace equation to derive the Green's theorem and the desingularization approach to derive the conventional boundary integral equation for wave structure interactions. The specific Green function needs to be chosen. So for simplifying the integral equation for wave structure interactions, such that the boundary integral equation would be on the body surface and the control surface only. In here, a summary is presented for the potential decomposition, the relevant Laplace equations, and the boundary conditions, including the incoming wave, the diffracted wave, and the radiated wave. The potential are given in phi 0, phi 7, and the phi j, here j equals to 1 to 6, representing the six degrees of freedom motion. The Laplace equation are given in this. The seabed and the free surface condition are all in same form. Here, we can see the second order differentiation with regard to time are in the free surface condition. Based on the Laplace equation and the corresponding seabed and the free surface condition, we can obtain the potential for incoming wave if the wave amplitude and the frequency are given. The potential function phi zero would be given in this form. Here, A is the amplitude, omega is the wave frequency, and H is the water depth. K is the wave number. Beta is the wave instant angle. And the body surface would be applicable only for the diffracted and radiated waves. For the diffracted wave, the normal differentiation of the combined potentials of the incoming wave and the diffracted wave would be zero on the body surface SB. This means the structure diffracts the wave when it is stationary, and the body surface condition can be also expressed in this form here. And the normal differentiation of the radiated wave potential is given as this. This means the potentials of the radiated wave are induced by the unit velocity of the structure motion. And in the far field, both the diffracted wave and the radiated wave would disappear, given in this form. As we have already shown, the dynamic equation and the relevant boundary conditions are all linear. 
Thus, the silver position principle can be employed. You can see this in the talk of the topic part one, wave energy conversion, potential flow theory. Another important simplification for such a linear system is for the frequency domain analysis. For instance, for the real potential, the capital phi can be expressed as this. Here, time factor is given in terms of an exponent of minus i omega t. And the phi here is the complex amplitude of the velocity potential. In frequency domain, the potential can be simply expressed by the potential amplitude phi, and the time factor is dropped. So for the first and the second differentiations of the real potential, the capital phi, with regard to time, we have the expression as this and this. And in frequency domain, the corresponding parameters are given in this and this. Here again, we can see the expressions in the frequency domain analysis. The time factors are simply dropped. Similarly, for the motion of the structure, capital C is expressed as this. Here, C is the complex amplitude of the structure motion, the capital C. And its frequency expression is simply given as C. The time factor is dropped here. And the corresponding velocity and the acceleration are given by the first order and the second order differentiations of the real motion, the capital C, with regard to time, given by this, and in the frequency domain, we can again drop the time factors. So we have the expression as this. Now we look at the potential functions in the frequency domain. We rewrite the equations and the boundary conditions based on the notation in the previous slide. We can see here the Laplace equations are the same because there is no time involved in the expression. And the seabed conditions are same as well for the same reason. But in frequency domain, the free surface condition would be different. Here, the second order differentiations with regard to time have been replaced by these terms. And the body conditions and the far field conditions are the same. Again, here, there are no time factors involved in the expressions. And uh, we can see the potential for the incoming wave is given as this. And uh, we can see the time factor has been dropped for the potential in the frequency domain. If we compare this to the expression of the real potential of the incoming wave. The potential for radiated wave will be given in this form in the frequency domain. And for a comparison, the expression for the real radiation potential is given in red here. We can see the structure motion, Cj dot, is replaced by minus i omega Cj. In the next few slides, we will demonstrate why we can just distribute the sources 
on the fruit boundary, not in the fruit, neither outside the fruit. This could allow us to simplify the 3D problem very much. To achieve the goal, we can construct the fruit domain using the control surface SC together with the body surface SP, the wet surface, and the fruit domain can be defined as V, which is enclosed by SC plus SP. Now we suppose the flow is rotational and incompressible, that is, the potential flow, for which the flow velocity potential function exists and satisfies the Laplace equation. To establish the Green's theorem, we suppose two potential functions. The target potential function, phi, which is the function we are trying to serve, and a known potential function, phi zero, for instance, a ranking source or a green function. Both of the potentials satisfy the Laplace equation as this. So based on the Gauss divergence theorem, we can change the surface integral on the surface SC plus SB to the integral on the volume V given as this. If we examine the volume integral and some mathematical manipulations, we can have this expression and we can cancel out these two terms. So we have the expression as this. Because these two potential functions satisfy the Laplace equation, therefore the volume integral is zero. So we can obtain the Green's theorem as this and the Green's theorem is the fundamental and the most important equation for the boundary element method for fluid structure interactions based on the potential flow theory. For simplifying the problem, the known potential function phi zero is taken as the potential of a unit source. Suppose the source is located at the location indicated by the vector x0 and the field point indicated by vector x. So the potential would be given in this. Here r is the distance between the source and the field point. Obviously, the specific potential function would satisfy the Laplace equation if the vector x0 is not equal to the vector x and it would become a singularity when the vector x0 equals to the vector x. With the singularity in the fruit, the Green's theorem would not be valid. Hence, a method called the singularization is used to exclude the singularity, so to avoid the mathematical difficulty. For instance, the singularization in the fruit here and the desingularization on the fruit boundary here. In fact, by doing so, the most important boundary integral equations can be derived for the problems of fluid structure interactions. If there is a singularity in the fruit, 
Then we can construct a very small sphere enclosed by S epsilon z here. And now the singularity free root domain would be enclosed by the combined surface SC plus SB and uh, SE. Here the connecting surfaces would be in same size but uh, in the opposite directions. Thus these two connecting surfaces would cancel each other. Therefore, the Green's theorem can be expressed as this. And uh, if we move the surface integral on S epsilon to the right hand side, we have the expression as this. Here, if we look at the surface integral on the small surface as epsilon, we can imagine the target potential function phi in the sphere would be constant and its normal differentiation would be constant too. Therefore, for this integral, we can take the potential phi and uh, the potential differentiation out of the integral. We have this. So if we look at this integral here, the differentiation with n would be just the opposite with the differentiation with regard to r. Therefore, we have the expression here. And on the small surface as epsilon, R would be constant, so we can move the R out of the integration. So we have this and uh, this. So this term would be given as 4 pi. And we can also look at this integration on the small surface as epsilon here, because R would be constant on the small surface as epsilon. So we have this expression. Therefore, this term would be zero. Hence, after the singularization, we have the expression as this. And we can express the potential in the fruit would be given as the surface integration on the fruit surface SC plus SB. But uh, it should be noted, the potential function phi on the left-hand side is the potential function in the fluid domain. This relation means the potential in the fluid can be obtained using the potential and the singularities on the boundary. In this slide, we will see the desingularization on the fluid boundary. To desingularize the singularity on the boundary, we can construct a semi-sphere S epsilon on the boundary to exclude the singularity in the fluid on the boundary. And the Green's theorem would be given in this expression. So we can write the relation as this. So if we look at the surface integration on the small surface S epsilon, we can understand the potential function phi in the semisphere can be taken as constant and the same for its normal differentiation. Therefore, the surface integration on the small surface as epsilon will be given as this. If we apply the similar desingularization in the previous slide, we will obtain this integration would be 2 pi and this part would be 0. Therefore, the desingularization on the fluid boundary would lead an expression 
as this. Here, phi on the left hand side here is the potential on the boundary either on SC or on SB. This equation is a very important equation. Means the potential function on the boundaries can be decided by the sources distribute on the boundaries. And a very important conclusion can be obtained, that is, the potential can be obtained from the distributions of the singularities on the boundary only. And this equation can be used for solving the strength of the distributed sources on the boundary, and thus solve the potential problem. For wave structure interactions, the construction of the fluid domain would be different from those fully immersed body, and it would be a little bit more complicated. Here, the fluid domain would be bounded with the following surfaces. The body surface, SB, and the control surface, SC. And the free surface, SF, and the seabed boundary, SZ. The last two boundaries would made the problem of wave structure interaction more difficult. Thus, the desingularization in the fruit would be given as in this equation. Here, the surface boundary would be the combination of the surfaces SC, SB, SF, and SZ. Similarly, the desingularization on the boundary would be given as this. And this equation is the equation we will use for deriving the applicable boundary integral equation. For the practical application of wave structure interaction, the green function must be chosen carefully, as those indicated in WAMIT. And by doing so, the problem can be simplified very much, because the chosen green function would satisfy the free surface and the seabed conditions automatically. In deep water, the long potential phi zero is given as this specific green function. Here, r is the distance between the source and the field point, and r prime is the distance between the source marrow by the free surface and the field point. Capital R is calculated as this, and the capital K is the wave number of the wave in deep water, which would be given as this. And the capital JO is the Bessel function of zero order. And in the finite water depths, the specific green function is more complicated given in this expression. Here, R double prime is given as this, and uh, k is the wave number in the finite world depth. It should be noted, although the complicated formulations, the singularities for these Green's functions are only for the first term here, not for other terms, for which the source and the field point might only be possible to be coincident. Thus, the desingularization on this Green's function would be exactly the same as the simple Green function, 
1 over r as we have done in the previous slides. Use the specific green function g to replace the simple source 1 over r in the boundary integral equation. Now the desingularization on the fluid boundary would be given as this. So again, the fluid boundary includes SC, SB, SF, and SZ. If we separate the surface integral, we have this expression. And in the right-hand side of the equation, we have the surface integral on SC plus SB and plus the surface integral on SF plus the surface integral on SZ. And uh, in the next two slides, we will see by using the specific Green's function G, what we will get for this two surface integral on SF and on SZ. Here, we will examine the surface integral on the free surface SF. Since on the free surface SF, both the potential function phi and the chosen green function G would satisfy the free surface condition given as this equation and this. And uh, we can also see the normal differentiations of the potential and the green function on the free surface would be same as those differentiations with regard to Z because the normal direction on the free surface is in Z direction. So substitute the free surface condition for the potential phi into the integrand of the surface integral. We have the expression as this, and we can write it as this. Here, if we apply the free surface condition for the green function, we can see the integrand of the surface integral would be zero. Thus, the integration would be zero. And we can also see if the green function does not satisfy the free surface condition, and this surface integral on SF would not be zero. Here, by choosing the specific green function, the surface integral on SF would be zero. Now we are going to examine the surface integral on the seabed boundary SZ. On the seabed XZ at Z equaling to minus H, both the potential function phi and the green function G would satisfy the following seabed condition given as this and this. Here we can see the normal differentiation of the potential function and the green function would be opposite to their differentiations with regard to Z because the normal vector on the seabed would be opposite with the Z direction. So substitute the seabed condition for the potential function phi, we have the expression as this. And if we apply the seabed condition for the green function, we can obtain the integral which would be zero. So again, if the green function does not satisfy the seabed condition, and the surface integral on SZ would not be zero. Here, the integral on SZ would be zero because of the chosen 
green function. By applying the specific green function, the surface in the growth on SF and uh, on SZ would be both zero. Thus, the boundary integral equation can be expressed as this, and we can see this boundary integral equation is the same as that of the body immersed in the fluid. The only difference for this boundary integral equation is that the green function must be chosen, as we have talked about it in the previous slide. So for the separate the surface integral into the integrals on SB and uh, on SC respectively, we have the expression as this. Note the potential function phi on the left hand side would be either on SB or SC, although it might also be on SF and SZ. These two have no practical significance for solving the potential problem. This boundary integral equation of wave structure interaction is not ready yet for a solution because the control surface is still arbitrary. And the next step is find the solution of the surface integral on the control surface. This will be discussed in the next part of the talk.